Hi folks, welcome back. Got a Defender 90 here and we've added quite a few uh, driver aids. So I'm gonna take you around them, but more importantly, I'm gonna show you the way we fit them or explain the way we fit them and show the differences that you might see when you see them fitted elsewhere. So we've added front parking sensors. So nothing too special about that, fairly standard stuff really, but it's the way they're fitted. So with these little undermounts here, you have to attach them to the bumper. So when it's a genuine bumper like this, rather than add self to drill holes and put self tappers in, which are just gonna rust to pieces underneath, I'll see if I can show you. We, we drill the holes, then we tap them out. So we put a machine thread in there <clears throat> and then we had a stainless steel screw. We put copper slip on the stainless steel screw before we put it in and then we wax all inside the back of the bumper when we're finished, as well as obviously uh, trunking the cables and cable tying them all up. So, you know, you can put parking sensors on these in a couple of hours, or you can spend nearly four hours, which we do, and that's the way we do it. So that's something that we do a little bit differently. Coming round to the back, we've done a reverse camera. Now I've explained this before, but it's a Pioneer reverse camera, nothing special about that, but we've taken the camera off the bracket We've um, keyed the bracket, we've then etch primed it, and then we've redone it in matte black. So that's got the original paint and then two more coats of paint over the top. The reason why we do that is because after a period of time, they will go rusty, but these won't. The cable entry point underneath, we put that tiny grommet in. We have to actually cut the cable to put it through that grommet. Otherwise you've got to make a great big hole to get the connector through. So we cut the cable, we bring it inside, we solder it, we shrink tube it, and we put it all back together. And the result of that is that tiny little cable entry point. Now you might look at that and say, well, it's not been sealed, but it has. So we seal it from the inside, never from the outside. The reason for that is when you look at it, it looks really, really pretty. So how have we secured it? Well, we've stuck it with its magic foot, but we've also got a black anodized stainless steel screw that goes inside the bracket. So it will never go rusty and it should never come loose. So. Yeah, lots of people fit reverse cameras, but they don't all fit them like this. The reason why we put it up there is because it gives you a really good view of the back of the Land Rover. Um, you can barely see the back, the back wheel. The camera itself's got 180 degree viewing angle, so it sees everything behind it. We've also added rear parking sensors and we've fitted those in the same way as the fronts. We've done a double DIN conversion. Now, wow, these really vary. Um, I see loads and loads and loads of double DIN conversions. They pop up on Instagram all the time. So first of all, we put the proper logo on the screen. Now that makes a massive difference in my opinion. Second, we get it in nice and flush so you haven't got big gaps here. Now there's a trick to doing that and it's an awful lot of work. You have to remanufacture the heater, the heater pipes behind. Um, so we do that and it takes a long time. It takes us a day to fit this. You Also you'll notice there's not a great big blank here. So that's because we take the original panel we completely refabricate it, so we cut it, refinish it, repaint it, and we end up with something that look, looks like that. And I think you'd have to agree, that looks right. I've even seen them with self-tappers in the corners, when the, the hole in the dash has probably been cut the wrong size, and you've had to put self-tappers in to hold it in. I think you'd have to agree, that's the way a Defender Double Din conversion should look. Would you not? What do we do with the USBs? Well, we could just flap them out over there, or hang them out under the dash, or, we could add a proper flush USB socket, which we've added here. If you had a cubby box, we'd put them in between the cup holders, but we don't just leave them flapping around, not in a Defender. So USB one, USB two, all nice and flush, nice and reliable, and nice and serviceable. So there you go. We use the Alpine and the Pioneer, the two best units really, the Alpine 705, the Pioneer 9200, and the Pioneer 930 if you want something with integrated nav. If you want to know the pros and cons of the units, just give us a call or drop us an email. What antenna do we use? Well, we don't use a glass aerial, that's for sure. We use a Nakatananga dual band antenna. So this is really cool because it sits nice and upright. We used to use an active antenna, which was also cool, but it raked back. This, I think you'd have to agree, looks way better. It's not a cheap aerial, but it works really well and it looks like it's meant to be on the truck. It's also nice and tough, so it's not going to get damaged. So there you go. A few fairly simple driver aids to this Defender, but hopefully I've just explained to you the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. Thanks for watching.